if, if we want to make progress in protecting the environment, we have to at the same time make progress in meeting the needs of people and vice versa. If we want to be able to meet the needs of people over the long term, we have to protect the environment so that future generations have a, have a chance to have their needs met. Those two things go together. So this, that sustainability challenge, that meeting the needs of people, protecting the life support systems of the planet, is, is you know, what is the key that's needed. But it's incredibly hard. It's hard to do. We don't know how to do it. So um, I think I, I view it as this enormous challenge that's ahead of us and that None of us can do working alone, but we really have to work in interdisciplinary, integrative ways. And the first part of the challenge is getting um, the right kind of information, the right kind of knowledge. And again, I, you know, I made the point that often we, we think we know what some decision maker might want to know, but we're wrong. We haven't talked to the decision maker. We don't really understand what their problems are, what their challenges are. And so we, it's not to say that we're going to do exactly what they tell us to do but it's to understand what their challenges are so that we can use our creativity and use our, our scientific information and knowledge to help with that. Then, um, so I mean, let's say we create that use-inspired new information that could be useful. The challenge is to make sure that it actually is, that, it's, um, that it's, there aren't barriers to its use or that, that all the information that's needed is in place for the decision makers to use it. What's challenging now is that people need lots of different kinds of information and they need to have it integrated or they need to integrate it themselves in order to make decisions. They need to understand global markets or, you know, uh, glo global commodity markets, that is, or they, they need to understand something about projections of climate change or they need to know something about water resources and, and you have to put all those pieces together. That's hard to do. So I think we are looking for sustainability and for sustainable decision making. We need an extension of the 21st century that is an organization that links the best knowledge of places like this university um, to decision making and, and helps make that connection work. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a different model uh, and it will have to be a little bit different than the extension of the 20th century. I think the knowledge system approach can be applied to just about any big challenge that in, involves providing decision makers with, with the suite of knowledge and understanding that they need. Mm -hmm. uh, so it could be used uh, in controlling infectious disease in the developing world or in improving water resource systems um, in places around the world or it could be used in um, uh, trying to get information about climate change to decision makers, policy makers in Washington. The idea is, is to, to think systematically about who's making the decisions, who's affecting those decisions, um, where knowledge has a way of getting into that system, you know, and it becomes, how does knowledge become useful in that, sort of evaluating that, and then deciding who to interact with, who to link with, to have um, to give your, your, your new knowledge the best chance of actually being heard and used. So yeah, I mean, I, I haven't done it, but I can imagine thinking really systematically about if I wanted to reach a certain set of decision makers, maybe, you know, the uh, state of California's legislature about climate change issues, I would think very carefully about how, who they look to for information, who are they used to getting their best information from, and I'd connect with that organization. That's a knowledge systems approach.